The killing of Tyree Nichols, an unarmed black man pulled over in a regular traffic stop by five police officers in Memphis, Tennessee, has reignited the perennial debate over race and policing. Now, this case is different from the other prominent officer-involved killings that have preceded it, George Floyd, Michael Brown, Breonna Taylor, in that not only was the deceased person black, but all of the officers involved in his death were also black. And it all took place in Memphis, a city that is 65% black. Nevertheless, former Congressman, Democrat, Mondaire Jones, warns people not to be distracted by those facts. If you think, Jones wrote, the Memphis police officers had to be white in order to exhibit anti-blackness, you need to take that AP African American Studies course Ron DeSantis just banned. Yes, everyone involved was black, but they were still motivated by anti-blackness which is just another woke buzz term, meaning white supremacy, as viral libs have rushed to point out on social media. I got a message today for some white people. If we have white people listening, paying attention, I wouldn't mind if you would do this with me. We rub our chests, we find our heartbeat, and we say, we did this, we did this. White supremacy did this. I'm talking about Tyree Nichols. The police didn't do this. The Memphis Police Department didn't do this. White supremacy did this. The cops have been arrested. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty, even though the video evidence that we have is pretty damning. But by the standard of the left, viral nobodies and prominent politicians alike even if the cops are convicted, it wasn't really the cops' fault. According to many on the left, the responsibility for Tyree Nichols' killing, and really for all the evils in the world, lies with white people and their alleged system of white supremacy, even when the white people are nowhere in sight. The video of that white liberal lady saying that even though even though the, all the cops involved in the killing of Tyree Nichols are black, even though Memphis is a black city, even though white people were nowhere to be seen, she says, beat your chest. Beat your chest, white people. This is our fault. This shows you a, a point that I've made for years now, which is that racism, white supremacy, all these terms are just, just uh, synonyms in our modern culture for evil. It's, so it's always got to be white people's fault. The The ultimate sin is racism, and, and by racism specifically, racism from white people, white supremacy, white nationalism, whatever you want to call it. And what, what she is doing is expressing a weird modern lib version of the true and traditional doctrine of original sin. She's even beating her breast. In, in Christianity, what we do is we beat our breasts and we say, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. The, the understanding of original sin is that we, in our sins, have killed Christ. We have slain Christ because Christ is incarnate to uh, die for mankind, to redeem mankind from his sins because we all sinned in Adam. When Adam first took that bite of the apple and lost his paradise and sin and death pervaded the world. So we, in a very real sense, are responsible for killing Jesus. You might say, well, we weren't walking around first century Palestine doesn't matter. We, because of our fallen humanity, which is not just some weird thing that we're imagining, it, it is a, an observable fact. This is a fallen world and we all sin. So that part, totally observable, obviously true. Uh, the understanding is that we are born with that. And so we, we carry a real fault and we continue to sin in our thoughts and in our words and what we do and what we fail to do. Now, the liberals, intuiting this fact of human nature, reject all of the, all of the stuff that goes with it. The liberals reject that God exists, often. They reject that we need a savior who comes outside of us. They reject, uh, they reject everything about our traditional culture and the religion that animates our traditional culture. But they realize that these facts still exist. And so they just have to transmute them into some weird new leftist religion. And so what they do is they transmute that into a literal beating of the chest over white supremacy, which is not the cause of it. Very often you will hear people say, 
The original sin in America is slavery, or at a broader level, the original sin of America is racism. That isn't true. All that stuff is, there's plenty of bad stuff that happens in America and other places around the world. But the original sin of America is original sin. And when you try to try to translate that into some weird modern religion where you get rid of God and you get rid of all the all the stuff that undergirds it, you end up sounding like wackos, like that liberal lady on TikTok and like Mondaire Jones. White supremacy did not cause this killing. We, we don't really know the crucial fact here, which is what happened before the video came on. There's video footage now, body cam footage, dash cam footage has, has been released. Officers Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justin Smith have all been charged with two counts of official misconduct, uh, one count of official oppression, second degree murder, obviously the biggest one there, aggravated assault act in concert, and two counts of aggravated kidnapping. The video footage looks very, very bad. There is, there is one question that remains, which is, why did they pull this guy over? They say that they pulled him over for reckless driving. The head of police in Memphis says that we don't have evidence of that yet. So we don't know. Really, the cameras kind of click on as this is happening. So you don't really see the earliest parts of this encounter. Then uh, Tyree Nichols resists arrest and runs away, and then they get him, and they basically just beat this guy to death. He doesn't die on the scene. They don't get him medical attention. He dies later at the hospital. It's really damning stuff. I, it's hard to imagine these guys are going to get off the hook for it. But in this country, people are innocent until proven guilty, so we'll see if anything comes out on trial as to why they pulled him over in the first place, why this escalated so quickly. One theory that is going around right now a very politically incorrect theory, is that these cops were hired with lowered standards. So this is a theory, a law enforcement official Karen Parmar says, according to a source within the Memphis PD, the five officers charged were not hired through the usual PD hiring process. City leaders felt the existing process was too strict and kept certain people from getting jobs at the department. City leaders began their own hiring process and then pushed new hires into the agency, bypassing the testing procedures in place at the department. We know that this sort of thing happens. There was a big uh, lawsuit about this in New Haven some years ago because first responder exams, uh, allegedly there weren't enough people of certain demographics, there wasn't enough diversity in the department, and so they lowered the standards. Um, It it happens, whether it happened here, it remains to be seen, but it is being reported by multiple outlets. And this, this is one of the weaknesses with democracy. This is one of the weaknesses that the Founding Fathers wrote about, framers wrote about, that political thinkers have have recognized throughout history, which is that if a regime becomes too democratic, you have a leveling. And so it's not that everybody is raised up to the highest levels of excellence, but rather that everybody becomes sort of handicapped, like uh, Kurt Vonnegut writes about in Harrison Bergeron, or like we see today, just a lowering of standards. Okay, not enough people that we want to get into certain schools are not get, are getting into certain schools, so we're just going to get rid of the SAT. We're going to get rid of the ACT. We're going to lower the entry exams to become a cop or to become a firefighter. We're uh, Not enough women are in the military. We want more women in the military. Let's lower the physical requirements to get into the military. And so it's just, it becomes a lowering to the lowest common denominator. And, and you, you see this in the writing of our founding fathers. That's why they did not give us a democracy. That's why they write so disparagingly about democracy. Uh, it's why they didn't even give us quite a republic or just a representative democracy in that the American form of government really includes aspects of all three types of government. There are three types of government, uh, monarchy, aristocracy and democracy. And according to the ancient writer Polybius, uh, those are the three good versions of that government. It's not that only one of those is good, the other two are terrible. All three can be good, but they have a corrupted version too. The corruption of monarchy is tyranny. The corruption of aristocracy is oligarchy. The corruption of democracy is mob rule. And and, uh, he, he views this as a kind of cycle of regimes that is constantly going to evolve. So what the American founders and framers tried to do is establish a regime that includes aspects of all of them. You have a monarchical element in the strong executive and the president. You have an aristocratic element, it, certainly in the Senate and elsewhere in the government, a representation for the landed classes, especially when there were more stringent voting requirements 
and uh, it was just a more of an aristocratic kind of a society. And then obviously a very strong democratic representation too. Is that what happened here? We don't know. It's going to go to trial, but uh, regardless, even, even in this case where the facts are so clear, was there a white person in sight? No, it doesn't look like it. Very, very few, if any. Nevertheless, you are going to see the popular press just uh, absurdly try to blame this on the usual old culprit white supremacy. The reason they're going to do that is because that phrase is simply a byword for evil and the fallen nature of man in modern America. Now, this is not to let the cops off the hook here. Conservatives are generally strong defenders of cops. I'm a strong defender of cops. I'm especially a strong defender of cops in Memphis. I don't know how many of you have ever been to Memphis. Memphis is a very dangerous place. Memphis is one of two places in this country that I have ever been jumped or very nearly jumped. The other was on the Jersey Shore where I used to vacation a lot as a kid. The other one was in Memphis. I was in Memphis for one night back in, I want to say this is, that was probably 10 years ago, more than that probably at this point. And I, I was uh, stopping off in Memphis with a buddy of mine. We went to Beale Street, which is the main drag, had some drinks, had a couple Coca-Colas, listened to some music. And we were walking back. We were probably two blocks off of Beale Street. Uh, kind of stood out like a sore thumb, smoking cigars. I was probably wearing some silly colored polo shirt. But we're walking and we see some guy. It looked like he was either breaking into a car or he looked like he was up to no good. And, and we hear, hey, fellas. I say, I don't want to talk to this guy. We walk in the other direction. He starts walking. He goes, fellas, fellas. He starts walking after us. We start walking faster. He starts walking faster. We run. He starts running after us. Finally, and we had cigars, so we didn't want to just go inside. But we see a hotel. So we get in front of the hotel. There's obviously a huge camera right there. We're right in front of the opening and closing doors. And this guy stops running right outside the, the frame of the camera. He can see the camera too. He's a little bit further out. He goes, hey guys, you, come, you want to come over here? I said, uh, no. He goes, oh. Can you, can you give me some money? I said, no. He goes, oh. He goes, can you pray for me? We said, yes. Yes, we can pray for you. Absolutely. And I kid you not. He goes, can you pray for me over here? <laughs> he's, he's still trying so desperately. Hey, come on over here so I can jump you and steal your money. <laughs> this was two blocks off Beale Street, the main part of Memphis, okay? So I don't think Memphis is going to be served by taking cops off the streets. I think probably Memphis needs many more cops on the streets. But you still need training, you still need high standards, and you still need justice served. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't allow just roving gangs of untrained cops to go around terrorizing people. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm probably the, the only commentator in all of America who, who thinks that we should wait to see what comes out at trial before totally forming our opinions. But facts certainly don't look good. Today is Music Monday. The rest of the show continues now. Mr. Davies and the producing team has some really profound music for me to analyze because you know I am a cultural maven. I am this the hip-hop, pippity-pop kind of music man over here. You don't want to miss it. Become a member and use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. We'll see you over there.